Hi, welcome back biology students and maybe some health students as well. At my school, sex ed is covered in biology, so I get the privilege of teaching that. So today I wanted to talk about STIs and STDs. During my research for this lecture, something I found absolutely phenomenal is that 15 to 24 year olds, which is the age group, well the bottom half of that, right? The age group that I teach um, accounts for half of all new STD infections. So that's kind of scary. Um, something that kids always ask is what's the difference between STI and STD? For one, just the terminology, right? Sexually transmitted infection versus sexually transmitted disease. So what would indicate an infection? That you have a bacteria, a virus, or a parasite of some sort present. And today I'm just going to talk about the bacterials and tomorrow I'll hit viruses. Um, you've contacted the organism, you've contracted an infection, and that infection may progress to disease. Disease in includes symptoms. So if you're asymptomatic, you have an infection. Not all infections will lead to diseases. Uh, typically your bacterial infections, they can be um, cured with antibiotics and then they go away. Um, a lot of your viral infections will never go away and they often do progress to the point where they show symptoms and will be qualified as an STD. So HPV, for example, the human papillomavirus, is an infection. You have the virus present, but unless it's showing signs or symptoms of its presence, you simply have an infection, not a disease. So the disease requires for there to be a symptom present. Often people do not know that they have an infection until they show symptoms of the disease itself, which is why sexually transmitted infections are becoming more and more common. People don't know they have the infection and then they're passing it on to other people. Uh, cervical cancer, for example, HPV is your infection and then it can progress to cervical cancer, other types of cancers, or genital warts. And at that point, it's considered a disease. So as its name implies, sexually transmitted infections are contracted through sexual contact or sexual activity. So what kind of contact are we talking about? So bacterial and viral STIs are passed through bodily fluids. That might be vaginal secretions, semen, saliva, or blood. So a lot of people think you can only get uh, sexually transmitted um, infections through um, vaginal sex, but you can also be transmitted through oral and anal sex. So I think um, the oral sex is a myth that a lot of students have. They think that that is a safer form of sex. Herpes can spread from skin to skin contact, so you don't even need to pass fluids. Just the rubbing of the skin um, can pass on that infection. Hepatitis and HV, HIV can also be shared through needles. So not only is it passed on through bodily fluids, but also through the sharing of needles, which would share blood. Um, parasitic STIs like trichomonas um, or pubic lice, they can be spread through close personal contact, so sharing articles of clothing, maybe sharing bed sheets, being in close proximity with each other's bodily hairs. Uh, looking at the three bacterial infections today, so the big three, chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis. Chlamydia is the number one sexually transmitted infection um, in the United States. Uh, we have been raising our numbers of cases progressively for five years in a row with these three bacterial infections to the point uh, we have over 2 million cases. So I have a lot of um, graphs in this because we, it is a science class and science likes graphs. So combined cases of syphilis, gonorrhea, and chlamydia have reached an all-time high in the United States. And this graph, you might recognize biology kids. We did a graph similar to this in ecology, um, an age pyramid, if you will. And so it's very similar to what we did in ecology where you saw how many people in a population were of a same certain age. But this time we're looking at how many people have reported cases of chlamydia in particular. 
So what do you notice off the graph right away? The biggest lines here are the 15 to the 24 year olds. So the group of kids I work with are the 15 to 19, but I'm still considering my college students, my kids, and they're not far off um, from the 20 to 24 year, year range. So I, I consider both of those groups my students. Seems females have a higher percentage of reporting rates than males, and perhaps that's because um, maybe the symptoms are just more present in females and males may more often be asymptomatic. So 61.8% of reported cases of chlamydia come from that age group. That's over a million cases a year. So I already mentioned most common STD in America and that is one of my test questions, kids. So you wanna know that one. Continuing on with chlamydia, we'll talk about um, cause, symptoms, and treatments. So the chlamydia trachomatis is the um, bacteria that causes it. Here's a nomenclature lesson. Um, genus species, always the genus is written with a capital letter and the species written with lowercase. And scientific names would be written in, uh, in italics. So that's what you see in this picture. Uh, so we're looking at the fact that you can treat chlamydia with an antibiotic. So all the ones I'm gonna talk about today can be treated with antibiotics because they are bacterial infections. The most obvious, perhaps, symptom is discharge, or the most common uh, example is discharge. You may also get itching or burn, burning during urination. So if this bacteria gets into the urinary tract, for example, you're getting microscopic tears um, on the inner linings, and those uh, tears could be in the um, reproductive tract as well. And so if some urine, which is highly acidic, splashes onto those open sores that you don't see, um, that would definitely create burning sensation. Itching is usually from the multiplication of the organism itself. Testicular pain and inflammation of the scrotal sac. So you want to be really familiar with what is normal for you. So um, you wouldn't notice a change, right? You wouldn't notice if you had an inflammation if you didn't know what your normal was. So it's always good to know what, what you typically would be. Abdominal pain, so this might indicate that the infection is working its way up further into the reproductive tract. An unpleasant odor accompanies um, the discharge. It's especially present um, during sex, bleeding between periods, and uh, usually you don't show any signs whatsoever. So over here, we're looking at uh, female seven out of 10 do not show signs and five out of 10 men uh, don't know they have it as well. So all of those people, if they don't know they have the infection, then they're gonna be passing the infection on to others. Okay, gonorrhea. So again, we're gonna start with the graph. So jumps out at you, where's our biggest graph? right here in the 20 to 24 year old range. Again, we have quite a few in my high school range up here. So um, these are reported cases in 2018. 1.14 million new infections occur of gonorrhea every single year. It's the second most commonly reported STI in America. Now, something that is a little bit scary about gonorrhea is that it facilitates the risk of HIV transmission. So before I was talking about how there's microscopic tears inside uh, the linings of the, um, like the vagina, for example, those microscopic tears make it a lot easier for a virus to enter your bloodstream. And um, something even more scary, as we've used more and more medications to get rid of gonorrhea, gonorrhea continues to evolve. It continues to become resistant to the penicillin that we're using or whatever next antibiotic we're using. Um, so you wanna take your antibiotic the full time, not just till when symptoms go away, right? Um, the way this happens is some of those bacteria have a miscellaneous mutation that allows them to be resistant to whatever um, antibiotic we're using at the time. And so those organisms survive, those bacteria survive, they reproduce, they pass on that antibiotic resistant trait. 
and they continue to do this as we have changed medication um, time and time again, they continue to evolve to be persistent with our medication. Um, here's a look at our Neisseria gonorrhea. Um, again, you can treat it mostly with antibiotics. The symptoms are often asymptomatic, though look at the graphic. Um, these are some of the more symptomatic um, signs. So you could get an infected urine if, so like remember the female, the urine, uh, the vagina, and the, and the urethra, the urethra opening, they're right next to each other, and it's easy when you're slipping and sliding for, for bacteria to make its way into the wrong track. For the males, the urethra goes right through the penis, so it's easy for a bacteria to make its way right on up into the um, urinary bladder, up the ureters, into the kidneys. So you can get urinary tract infections, kidney infections, again, the burning sensation with urination, that is never good. If you ever have a burning sensation when you're going to the bathroom, make a doctor's appointment and get it checked out. You can have inflammation of the penis and the testicles and discharge from the penis as well. Um, the female, same sorts of things, only in the female system. Um, you can get abdominal pain um, and pain with intercourse because of those uh, microscopic tears that bacteria create. Um, vag vaginal discharge and bleeding. So in truth, um, there's a slightly different color and texture, I guess, between um, chlamydia and gonorrhea's discharge. I don't think it's important to really memorize this one's yellow and this one's white. If you have a discharge, that's not normal. Know you're normal. So if you normally have a little bit of discharge and you don't have any of these other signs, well, that could just be you. That's normal. The body is flushing itself of mucus. But if you get a colored um, discharge or it has a, an odor to it, that's not your normal, right? So it doesn't matter if it's green, yellow, or white, or clear you want to go to the doctor and get it checked out. Okay, um, so gonorrhea, it infects our mucous membranes of the reproductive tract, so specifically um, the cervix, the uterus, the fallopian tubes. Um, it can also infect mucous membranes of the mouth, uh, throat, eyes, and rectum, so that would be transferred through other types of sex other than just vaginal sex. Chlamydia, gonorrhea, left untreated, they can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease. So this is maybe more relevant for women. Um, they can cause women to become sterile, for example. About a million cases every year occur with PID. So that creates inflammation in the female reproductive organs. You can imagine that would not be comfortable, right? They may damage the fallopian tubes themselves, which cause ectopic pregnancies or infertility in women. Again, if you leave either of these infections untreated, it can cause problems for the male as well. It can cause epididymitis, so the epididymis is inflamed. Anytime you see I-T-I-S at the end, that's referring to an inflammation of whatever word comes first. Um, the epididymis, remember, the sperm needs to travel um, through the testes, through the epididymis, where they mature, and then into the vas deferens. So if they're not, if that epididymis is swollen, and there's an infection inside that epididymis, that's definitely going to interfere with the maturation of the sperm. Um, this is even worse. It may travel then into the bloodstream and it can cause a life-threatening condition. So our third bacteria is syphilis. You might have heard of it before. It, it has been known um, through history to affect some famous people like Napoleon. Um, back in the day, people with syphilis would go a little insane because it does affect your brain and they would be put into an insane asylum and maybe they didn't know that they had this infection at all. So um, something really interesting in the age distribution graph here is look at how many more men have syphilis than have women. Um, I'm not really sure what the reason for that is. That would be a good research, I think, for somebody. Um, the peak seems to be right here around 25 to 29. The 15 to 19 year olds, you're, you're getting it a little bit too. Um, so don't think that you're immune to it. I think a lot of times teenagers think they're invincible, which is not the case. 
So syphilis was once a very major health threat. It caused arthritis, brain damage, blindness, all kinds of deformities. Search some pictures of syphilis online and it's crazy the type of bone destruction that it has um, caused. So around 1940s, penicillin came around and syphilis cases have um, since dropped until more recently, right? Um, so the cases plummeted in the 90s and they've been on a rise ever since. So syphilis is a little bit different than the others in that it comes in three stages. The first two stages are curable, the third is not. So know your normal, get it taken care of. Um, so the first stage happens pretty quick. You'll get some cankers within the first three months. Um, the second stage turns into a rash and the third stage that infection becomes systematic and it starts traveling through your bloodstream to various organs. So it's caused by the Troponium pallidum. That's the bacteria that causes it. It enters through skin and mucous membranes. So cuts in the skin and the mucous membranes. Um, so this is one that not necessarily do you have to um, share bodily fluids. If you come in contact with one of these open sores, then the bacteria will be um, transferred to you. You can cure it the first two stages with antibiotics. Um, the primary stage is highly contagious, those open sores. Secondary um, is also highly contagious, coming into contact with the rash. And tertiary, um, that is where it's more affecting the individual and it's become systematic. So looking at some pictures, I chose to give you some cankers that were not on the genitals. Um, most of the pictures you research probably are going to be um, either on the vulva of the female, the labia, um, or they'll be on the penis um, of the male. But I found plenty of pictures where we had cankers um, on the mouth. So here's some cankers on the tongue and here's some cankers on the lip. So cankers are like open sores. Um, the rash, pretty um, typical for it to show up on the palms and on the torso. Um, those cankers might also be on the anus, um, and I mentioned the other ones already. So the secondary, um, six weeks to six months after exposure, those rashes are going to be on the hands, the feet, and the torso, and those are characteristic rashes. So keep an eye out for those. Tertiary, um, you can see here some brain effect. Um, it also affects the heart, the nerves, um, causes paralysis, dementia, blindness, deafness, you name it, all kinds of uh, problems. So those are our three bacterial infections. Tomorrow I'll talk about three viral infections. Um, left untreated, those STDs, remember, can cause long-term problems. They can cause, um, they give you a higher risk of HIV, you can have PID, you can um, become sterile. So those are all bad. So the new norm should be talk, test, and treat. Talk to your partners. Um, talk openly about their experiences. Talk openly about your experiences. Get tested before you ever have any sexual um, contact. You want to make sure that neither one of you um, are asymptomatic of a virus or a bacteria. You want to make sure that um, you are treated if you notice any signs or symptoms, um, it's even a good idea just to get checked if you are sexually active every six months um, to, to make sure that you don't have a, an infection that you're unaware of. So coming up next month, April 12th to the 18th, is STD Awareness Week. So take what you've learned and share it with somebody. All right. Thanks for listening.